Yo, what's going on, guys? Lockout men. That is right. That's what I do. Y'all know me, man. I come back at y'all with, with, with a lot of good stuff. You know, today's podcast, I have another interview for you guys. That's what I do. I, I bring plenty of interviews. I, I like talking to truck drivers, man. I, you know, I, I like talking, you know, where they work with, with the experience. You know what I'm saying? And uh, this gentleman that I got right here has a whole lot of experience. He's an owner operator. You are an owner operator, right? All right. So, yeah, he's an owner operator. You know, he's, he's coming on to talk about the uh, owner operators versus the brokers. You know, the situation that's going on up in uh, up in D.C. You know, I want to hear what he has to say about uh, about all that. See if he agrees with, you know, what's, what the brokers is doing to him. And we about to we about to get into it. We about to get into it right now. Whoops. Wait a minute. Wrong button. You see what I'm saying? Always hit that wrong button. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Wrong button. Let me turn let me turn that down. Always hit that wrong button. Well, I am your host, Lockout Men. And if you like content like this and more, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share, and hit that bell for more content like this. Now I don't just tell y'all to subscribe. Just be just be telling y'all. I'm telling y'all to subscribe because when content like this comes out, you guys will be notified. You know what I'm saying? Well, on today's podcast, man, I would like to bring to the let me let me bring you up again. Hold on, right quick. There we go. I like to bring to the show, Mr. Joshua Andrews. What's going on, bro? Ham? How's it going? Oh, uh, it's going pretty good, pretty good, man. So, um, so you're an owner operator out here. How how long you been how how long you been driving trucks, man? I'm still a rookie, green behind the ears, man. Been out here seven and a half years. Seven and oh, seven and a half years, and you still consider yourself as a rookie? Uh, if you're not learning something new every day, you're in the wrong field. I, a rookie, my man. That's what's <laughs> up. That is what's up. It's seven years strong, and he still considers himself a rookie, man. Go ahead and uh, introduce yourself to my listeners and let them know where you come from, bro. Uh, Josh Andrews, of course, owner operator um, under JGA Freight out of uh, Ripley, Mississippi. All right, all right. So you, so are you from Mississippi, or are you, or are you, where, where are you from? I'm from Mississippi, yes, sir. All right, all right. Now you know, I used to, I used to when I'm on my way to Texas, man. I, 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 I flows through Mississippi. You know what I'm saying? I like the I like the accent. I like the ambiance down here. As a matter of fact, I got family that stays down in Mississippi. I got a chance to. Uh, he came and picked me up, and we got a chance to uh, see some of the sights of uh, downtown Mississippi, man. So, uh, growing up in Mississippi, man, what, what 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 was it like as a as as a young Andrews uh, growing up in Mississippi? Uh, the entire family was into trucking, uh, farming. You know, it's Mississippi, so it's, you know, welcome to Mississippi. Please rewind your clock 50 years. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, so uh, yeah, for me as a child, yeah, of course, school friends or whatever, but, you know, family back then was, uh, in my opinion, more of importance. So cousins and, you know, all that was, was best friends. and Right just hung out on the farm and did uh you know farm things okay okay so your family was uh so you so family a farmer so that's how you was able was you growing up in that field uh was you like one of them little kids that got up on them big tractors and and try to drive it and then when you became you know of a teenager you you started migrating into the family business uh, yeah, as far as a young, a young kid, yeah, I was on the tractors and, you know, the, the 18 wheelers were always intriguing to me, you know, with hauled cattle as well. Um, but that's just it. It was intriguing. I, uh, had my eye on, on something larger than, uh, the family business or being a truck driver. Oh, okay. I, uh, 
at the age of 21, I uh, moved to Nashville for two years. Uh, mm-hmm. Opened up a, a, a wholesale import export company there. Okay. And I was there for about two years, and uh, then I went out to uh, San Diego, California, for 13 years. Okay. Um, okay. Okay. Did Thir- some culinary work out there on Camp Pendleton after 9/11. Um, got into nightlife, um, doing promotions for nightclubs and stuff, and it wasn't until early 2013 um i just kind of felt lost Uh, soul was somewhere else it didn't matter you know what i accomplished or you know failed or 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 won with i was still missing something Mm -hmm. um so in early 2013 uh is when i decided to get into trucking i needed a for me a a, a vacation away from life and okay. I knew getting in an 18 wheeler could uh, provide that. You know what? You know, do you know? Driving trucks give a lot of opportunities for a lot of people. There's a lot of different reasons why why people get into trucking, and that's what's so intriguing about this industry, man. Because you you could just be a person, you know, that's that's like just just. For, for some odd reason, you just want to get away. And trucking gives you that opportunity to literally get away. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Get away from everyday life. Correct. You know? It, it, it gives you that, that opportunity to, give you, to get away from everyday life, man. Uh, so you, you got into trucking. You, so, of course, you know, you went to school. So did you, did you go through a trucking school or did you go to a – a trucking company to get your CDL? I went through a trucking school, uh, Stevens Transport, out of Dallas, Texas. Okay, okay. So, I, uh, wait, 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 wait. So, that I know Stevens Transport has they has their own school, but they was, was Stevens Transport was the one that, quote, unquote, uh, paid for it and you went to work at Stevens to work it off? Correct. Oh, okay. Okay. How long was the uh how long was the contract with them? Um I I, I don't uh, re- really recall the length. I'm going to say it was probably 12 months. Um I, I some classmates that, you know, I was in school with, I stay in contact with and and back then I knew that they lasted for about 6 months and they went on to better opportunities and they had some issues. With, with Stevens, with Stevens. Uh, you know, trying to revoke their license or whatever. Right, right. Um, but I, I, I don't remember the term. I, th- I think it was a year, and you know they would pay the 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 school in off school tuition. Co- correct, correct. So did so were you able to oblig you know obligate that contract, or you you was one of the ones that you know left early too. No, I, I've fulfilled the contract. I've I've always been a. Uh, um, if I start with you, I'm gonna end with you, um, and and I had all intentions on, you know, staying with Stevens. I was treated very well. I had wonderful driver manager. Upper management was, you know, fabulous. Um, it, I didn't spend a lot of time home. I was with them for 26 months. Okay. Um, and I think in that 26 months, I maybe spent 11 days of that, at, somewhere between 11 and 14 days at my actual location. Okay. At this time, was in uh, Surprise, Arizona. Um, but that was a lot of my choice. You know, like I said, I wanted to escape everything and kind of, you know, go out and, you know, see what I felt like I was missing out on in life. Um, so with Stevens in that time, I was able to, you know, I went out to and walked the Golden Gate Bridge. I mm-hmm. went to some Monday night football games in Chicago okay. and in New Jersey. Okay. And, you know, uh, I was in Chicago, um, at, well, I think in 2017 for game seven of the Stanley Cup. Okay. Um, you know, I, I, I done a lot of things. Uh, truck driving, uh, you know, not being at home allowed me. You know, I was able to say, hey, I want to go spend my my 34 hour reset at, you know, at at location X. And I would get a load to, you know, wherever that location may be and, you know, be able to 
do what people actually tell you. You know, if you drive a truck, you get to see the world. You know what I mean? You, you literally to got out to see the world. Well. Yep. You literally, Correct. Yeah, you Correct. literally got out to see the world because, you know, like I said, I mean, you know, even though truck driving gives you a lot of op, uh, a lot of opportunities out here, but still, you know, it's from point A to point B. It's always rush, rush, rush. Uh, your your sleep time is 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 messed up. You know, you got you got Lowe's that delivers at two o'clock in the morning, four o'clock in the morning, and and you and you won't be able to you know get proper adequate rest. Uh, uh, ten hours is all that you got to, uh, excuse me, all that you got to reset. So, but this man right here, he was like, no, nah, about that. I want to do it different. Yo, I'm going to take my 34 at the <laughs> Super Bowl. God damn it. <laughs> God damn me. Yeah, I, you know, I, like I said, I, I, my entire family was in trucking, and, and as a child, I was able to, you know, ride in the truck, and, and it's different as a child sitting in the passenger seat, you know, than it is an adult. Yeah, you starstruck. Uh, sitting in the driver's seat and, and turning it into what, for me, has turned into a career that, in all transparency, as a child, it was intriguing to me. Mm -hmm. But I, I can't use the word I was better than, but mm -hmm. I, I wanted to do better. Um, and maybe that's why, you know, it took me until 2013. Um, to actually get into the truck. Uh, you know, I always, I, I always felt like I was missing like my, my life was never full you know I, I didn't have a child at this point and you know it wasn't married and um I, I just felt like something was missing from me as a person you know it didn't matter the accolades you know the the, the money it, something was always missing okay. and when I got in a truck I you know I, I as a child like I said you know I, I it intrigued me but it wasn't something that you know, I, I was inspired to, you know, I want to be a truck driver. Mm -hmm. um, but when I got in the truck in 2013, um, it wasn't a, like, my life was full moment, mm -hmm. but it was definitely, you know, something that was missing, you know, for, from my, from my, during my adult life that okay. I didn't have. And truck driving, I'd say truck driving filled the cup halfway, 45 uh, forty-five percent way. The the truck driving definitely filled the cup, um, pretty good. Oh, okay, that's what's <laughs> up. That's what's up. All right, man. So, uh, so you've been uh, rocking out for for seven years. You know, you came from a family of uh farmers and stuff like that. Uh, and you 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 know you caught you. You know, you tried to do something that was uh that was different until you actually got into the truck. Now that you uh now that you truck driving, man, and you experience the world, uh, how long did it take you to to jump from uh being a company driver to owning your own trucks? Uh, get you know, talk me through that. Uh, well, I've done the two years with Stevens Transport. Um, and then, you know, during the time with Stevens, I, I hadn't really been home, uh, at home by Mississippi since I had left mm -hmm. Mississippi at the, you know, the young age of 19, I think, when I went to Nashville. Mm -hmm. um, I had only visited home twice, and that was for my grandmother's funeral and my grandfather's funeral. I'm sorry to hear I that, man. My condolences a, to you. I, I, I appreciate you. I'd only visited home those two times in a 16-year span. Um, so w once I started driving for Stevens and, you know, was out, able to adventure out, I drove through, you know, stopped in to visit family, and, and I kind of felt not a, you know, this is where I belong, but I kind of felt that, you know, I really needed to be there for some reason. Okay. Um, so I put in a two-week notice with Stevens, um, and started driving for a local company there in New Albany, Mississippi. Okay. Um, that allowed me to be home on the weekends. Uh, you know, Stevens Transport, I was trained on Over electronic the logs. This, 
this company was, uh, you know, paper logs. They oh. were over the road as well. They just they just didn't run electronic logs. It wasn't, you know, mandated then. Okay, okay. Um, so we run so we run paper logs. So I got, you know, I stayed with them for a year, um, and then I decided, you know, to purchase my, my own truck that I've now been in for just over four years. Okay, okay. So, uh, so being all of us including myself started with uh with paper law i mean not paper laws but uh electronic laws you know paper laws was kind of like secondary in case uh in it was it was what well, actually it still is and in case of the eld system goes down and then we have to we got the paper laws on backup i i say out of my five years, I had to use paper laws maybe twice. Uh, once when I was up in PA where the driver tech system comped out on me, you know, I was like, I was, and that was during my rookie years with uh, US Express. I was really, I was really, really shook. I mean, I was, I was taught how to use the paper laws, but I was like, oh man, it's just, you know, I haven't used it in a while. I had to pull over to the side. <laughs> so I pulled over to the side and uh, a, a PA trooper knocked on my door. And he goes, he was like, what you doing on the side, sir? I was like, well, I'm, you know, my, my, my system conked out and I had to, you know, get my paper laws together so I can, you know, put it together. He says, uh, follow me. I'm like, oh, okay. You know, I'm still green. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So he takes me over to, you know, up in PA. They don't have, they, they, their uh rest areas are the um are the uh dot stops you know what i'm saying so i get up there you know i get up there pull in and all like that he asked me for my asked me for my logs the first thing that he says and i tell him i said look as you can see my my system is out i've been trying to get it back on and yada 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 so I had to call, you know, I had to call my, uh, I had to call the law department so they could email me my laws so I can give it to him. Uh, he, he was a pretty cool guy. I mean, you know, he wasn't a dick, you know, or nothing like that. I mean, he did, he did write it up on the, on the paperwork, but I didn't get citation. I didn't get cited for it. You know what I'm saying? He just told me to, you know, put the, put the law book together and, you know, and get the system fixed. So, so yeah, I, I was pretty shook uh, with uh, with the paper laws. But since you was driving local, was was doing the paper laws easy easier for you, being that you was local? Uh, I, uh no, easier definitely wouldn't be. It's easier just to reach over there and hit a button. You know what I mean? <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's definitely the the easier. Um, you know, uh, without going in, into that a lot, you know, there's, there's a lot of room for error. There's a lot of room for, um, fixing. Um, I, you know, I've heard stories over the years, you know, people using two and three log books. Mm -hmm. Um, you know what I'm saying? Um, it's uh, for me and, and maybe it was just because I was trained on the electronic log. Mm -hmm. Um, it's easier that way. Um, do I agree with the mandates and all of that? I, I don't really believe that anyone does. Um, but the law is the law, and the rules have been the rules, regardless if it's on paper or if or, it's on this computer. It's been the same for many, many years. Exactly. Um, the exactly. only thing that's the only thing that's different is if you're doing it on paper, you can tear it out and you know mm. restart and to where you're on the electronic log it keeps you true um with the paper it, with the paper you you cook the books on the paper and that's and that i think that's why a lot of these old school drivers don't like electronic laws because they can't cook the books no more you know like they well, used to the, 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 yeah well and, and i i see both sides uh, you know again growing up 
uh, with a family of truckers and, you know, doing it myself. And, and I call myself, you know, a new school trucker because, you know, I'm in this era of trucking. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I do understand the constrictions. You know, if, if I was a local coffee shop owner, mm-hmm. I could go in and open my coffee shop at 3 o'clock in the morning. Mm-hmm. And if I wanted my coffee shop to run 24 hours and I'm the sole employee, there's do- no guidelines or restrictions about me doing that. And that that's a small business. Mm-hmm. And me, as a uh, single um, unit carrier, I'm a small business as well. So why... You know, why am I mandated? Uh, I have more overhead, more expenses, more risk, more insurance. You know, why am I mandated to, eight, you know, 14 hours a day mm-hmm. and only allowed to work 11 of those hours, you know, to where, you know, say my wife could have this coffee shop and work, you know, 24 hours a day and get in her car and, you know, drive around and, you know what I'm saying? But I, but I understand both sides. So, you know, I'm not an advocate of uh, the paper log system, and and I'm in the new school era of trucking. Mm -hmm. I enjoy the electronic logs because it's easy. Um, I'm always where I'm at. If, if God forbid, there's an accident and there's a fatality, um, there's really no way to hide anything on an electronic log. So that saves a lot of people financially you know a lot of families when there's something like that comes up you know it not only costs you as the truck driver but if you don't own the company you know it also costs the person that trusted you to drive for them as well exactly um, if there's something with a paper log or whatever um so i'm kind of torn you know in the middle uh, I, I understand both sides and, and and again just you know to double down do i agree with all of the mandates, absolutely. But I, I, I can speak for myself, but I would assure you and your listeners that uh, there's things that you don't agree with in the mandate. There's things that your listeners don't agree with. You mm-hmm. know, I think at the end of the day, we ultimately, you know, all are looking at, for the same thing. Uh, we just sometimes want to go about it in a different way gotcha gotcha that's what's up that's what's up and i agree with you 100 percent, man i'm a new school driver myself and yeah i'm 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 for eld so i'm i'm good with pushing the button you know i'm i'm here uh I, i'm good with the with the off duty with the on duty the the pc the sleeper i'm i'm good with all of that you know what i'm saying you know, if I don't have to, if I don't have to write it down, you know what I'm saying? I understand you guys don't, don't get mad at me or don't come at me and say, yo, you want to dumb it down and all like that. I do respect old school drivers because if it wasn't for you guys, it would not be no us. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But, you know, That's now, correct. now it's, it's technology time. You know what I'm saying? Everything, you know, you, you, you got to go with the flow. You, you got to go with the flow, man. All right. So you, um. So you you jumped into owner operations. What what, what gave you as, as you know aspirations to uh, own your own truck? What was why you jump up out of uh, being local into owning your own truck? Uh, I just I, I always um, you know I look back as you know as when I was a child and trucks intrigued me. I always just looked for more. Mm-hmm. Um, I always. Uh, again, I use the word wanted to be better or do better, but, you know, I, I use that word softly and with good intent opposed to, you know, bad intent. Um, so owning a truck was the next step. And, you know, I went in to the Stevens Transport, you know, truck driving school, and from day one when I sat down at the desk, my goal was to have my own truck and my own authority and and do it for myself okay um so i bought the truck you know three i'm three years in three years and two months i believe to be exact when i purchased my truck okay um got my truck from lone mountain truck leasing um great experience with those guys as well uh you for three years you you decided to you you decided to uh go 
to a lot of pl- a lot of people go to Lone Mountain. So Lone Mountain is a dealership. Am I correct? Correct. Okay. So yeah, a lot of people decide decides to go to uh, dealerships and get their get their trucks directly from a dealership, then going to uh, a company and and lease purchase it out. Why did you decide to go that route versus uh, going lease purchase, or have you tried lease purchase and then you went to? No, I it, during my time with uh, Stevens Transport, and, and again, I had a fabulous experience with those guys. I sat down and I went through their lease purchase program. It's a three-day class orientation that you go through, um, where they break down the numbers for you, and you know, I, I say try to make it make sense to you and let you see that you know there's more money involved. Me personally, there was I think 12 uh, women in the class that I sat down in, okay. and I, I don't know the exact number, but I believe that I was maybe one of three that did not choose to do the lease purchase i me personally i just couldn't make it make sense okay um for the the you know i'm paying the insurance i'm paying the truck payment i'm Mm -hmm. paying the maintenance Mm -hmm. i'm paying all the fees Mm -hmm. and i'm being forced to still do what they want me to do so at any given point if if i'm sitting there at a truck stop and see the transport i gotta i gotta give you an applause for that I got to give you an applause for that. Thank you, bro. Break it down. Continue breaking it down, man. Go ahead. Go ahead. If if I'm sitting at a truck stop and chances are there are going to be five to ten other Stevens Transport trucks sitting at that truck stop waiting for a load, my personal opinion in the matter was, is Stevens Transport has to take care of Stevens Transport. So that company truck, because I'm being dispatched by Stevens Transport, the company truck is going to have the option to the better load opposed to me, the owner-operator, so or the least purchase driver. So I'm going to be stuck there waiting, you know, for the next load or, or whatever. So just my personal opinion, I, I just couldn't make the numbers make sense with me paying for everything, taking all of the risk, and having very limited availability of making sure that I made money myself. I still had to depend on Stevens Transport to make sure that I made money when I was taking all the risk financially. So and to me, that just didn't make sense. So Stevens Transport, like I, and I, I, thank you, bro. Thank you, bro. Mic drop for that. Thank you, man, because a lot of, a, a lot of these new jacks, get into the game and first thing first they get in it and say yo i'm a lease purchase operator and and i'm making money and yada 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 but they don't know like you're still constrained to the company's regulations like i i can't take that i can't take i can't take that truck to another company you know i can't take that truck to another company I got a I'm suggested to their low board, you know, and I'm only making X amount of cent a mile. You know, that's right. you know right. that, that's uh you know they they, they want to come on and say, "Oh, well yeah, I'm an owner operator and I I'm, I'm an owner operator slash lease purchaser." No. No, you you're you, one or the other. You one or the <laughs> other. Exactly. Exactly. So you decided to uh jump out of there. You went local, of course. Uh you went local and you you went to Lone Mountain, got into your truck. Now now you uh driving for yourself. Um you you mentioned in the beginning that you have your your authority as well. So do you do you have your authority or are you just uh signed on with another company that has and riding off of their authority. No, no, no. I, I currently am running under my own authority. Um, I, I was leased on to uh, my cousin's company, trucking company, mm-hmm. out of Myrtle, Mississippi, for three years, um, and and I was able 
underneath his authority, I was able to, uh, you know, he didn't dispatch me. I was able, I had the freedom. I was, was blessed to to have the freedom to where I could book my own freight. Okay. I could dictate when and where I wanted to go. You okay. know, I, of course, had to abide by... You know, his, his rules and regulations policies mm -hmm. as far as when there's driver meetings and the log books and you know so forth okay. but i was able to basically operate my own company underneath his authority and and i and he got a percentage of my gross income so you know okay. he got a percentage of my fuel surcharge he got a percentage of every dollar that i made off of every load okay um if, you know um, so three years of that, and and I in transparency, I gave him fifteen percent of okay. every dollar. He got fifteen percent, um, and to me, I, I was able to three years run underneath his authority, not only to pinpoint where and what exactly I wanted to do, but to also have the security to where if I wasn't able to do it myself. I always had his company. To a, a direct location, you know, and, and something that I fell victim to during this process is I would get on the load board and, you know, sometimes on these load boards, they have a dollar amount of what the load pays. Right. Uh, okay. So for me, if I see, this load's paying twenty four hundred dollars. In the beginning, the load may be fourteen hundred miles. Okay. And I, I I have I have trucker knowledge, but I don't have owner operator knowledge. I don't have carrier knowledge. I don't have you know I didn't have a lot of the knowledge to know that if that load was you know fourteen hundred miles, you know it's going to cost me roughly six hundred dollars in fuel you know one direction you know my truck gets i'm not one of those eight miles per gallon trucks you know i'm a five six to a five eight type of truck okay um so in the beginning if i saw a load that was paying a high dollar amount say this load was going into texas you know it paid me say a dollar ninety two dollars a mile to go into texas where i wasn't savvy or you know the trucker knowledge that when you go into texas for two dollars a mile really round trip you're going to be somewhere in the dollar 35 dollar 50 range because coming out of texas you're lucky to get a dollar a mile exactly exactly man um, and, and, and like going into colorado you know loads pay extremely well but not now but they did going into colorado you know, and I would jump on that load and I'd mm -hmm. be like, ooh, I'm making some money. Right. But then I get into Colorado and I'm having to deadhead 250 miles. That you're not getting that, 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 that you're not getting paid. You, you're not even getting paid Correct. those deadhead miles. Cor Correct. So not only was I losing money in that aspect, but I was also still having to pay 15 percent of my gross you know, to this company that I was leased on to. Um, so I was able to gain so much knowledge, man. And, and unfortunately, there's not a lot of companies out there that allow new owner operators uh, to do that. They still mm -hmm. kind of dictate, mm -hmm. you know, where and when, or, or we'll say dispatch. You know, the owner operator is still obligated to said company and said company says when the truck goes and when the truck stays and there is so so much freedom in being a carrier opposed to an owner operator even as a one truck carrier you know i know that i have to make money i'm the sole provider and my family mm -hmm. uh, my now wife was a nurse mm -hmm. um, when we got together and you know now we've had a child and we made the decision you know for her to stay home and raise our son mm -hmm. opposed to us paying someone else okay. to, to raise him so uh, you know being out here is uh, I don't have to miss a birthday I don't have to miss a Christmas I don't have to miss a doctor visit I don't have to miss a baseball game 
Um, you know, and, and that's the freedom that at least purchase operators and even myself in the beginning didn't understand. There you go. There you go, man. What's up with that? Yes, sir. I appreciate you coming on, dropping them good jewels, man, because a lot of us, including myself, you know, I'm a, I'm a, a company driver, needs to know and understand uh, what what it is. So being uh so being your own operator, being an owner operator, being a being a uh, driver that's uh you know driving your own authority. Now you're able to uh book loads yourself. You're able to uh get you know get contracts with shippers out here uh that that keep you rolling. What's your feeling on on the situation now, man? Uh, the brokers versus the versus the owner operators out here, man. What's your what's your feelings about that? Because some some of you some of you owner operators saying that you guys is getting ripped off, and the brokers over here saying that it's you guys the ones that ripping yourselves off by underbidding. Um, well, I, I would probably have a lot of your listeners angry and upset with me. And no, no, no. Maybe a lot of. No, no. Go uh, ahead. You, you open, man. Upset with me. You open, man. Go because ahead. I, I, I do not um, feel like a lot of these people represent me mm -hmm. as a truck driver, as an owner operator, um, as a steering wheel holder. At, you know, as whatever we may classify ourselves in at the time. Um, I, I don't. I, a broker is in in business to make money, just as I'm in business to make money. And if there's a shortage of truck drivers, loads pay more. I'm not going to go to a broker and say, "Hey, man, I know that these loads are moving for four dollars a mile, and I've been pulling them for two dollars a mile. So I'm going to continue to pull them for two dollars a mile. I'm going to take the four dollars a mile." And the same as a broker. If the brokers work on a market, and, and I'm not a broker expert, I'm not a broker, I'm on this side of it, um, but I've spoken to a lot of brokers in this trans, you know, this period that we're in. Um, and brokers just say, and, and I'll speak out on Convoy, that's who I do a lot of my business through. Mm -hmm. um, I spoke to a broker there. I was moving loads from uh, Mississippi to Ohio and had been doing it for some time now mm -hmm. for a certain rate, mm -hmm. and I started losing the bid. So I called in, and I'm like, you know, hey, I'm, I, I've lost like four of these bids in a row, and I'm just curious as to what's going on. And it was explained to me in layman's terms that, you know, hey, we, we go to this shipper, and we get this rate. And sometimes the market is in your favor, and right now the market is in our favor. Mm -hmm. So if the market is 70 cents a mile, why would I want to pay you $2.33 a mile when I can get Joe's trucking service over here to pull it for 73 cents a mile? Mm -hmm. um, fortunately for me during this period, as an owner operator, I've not always operated smart, as I explained, with chasing dollar signs in the beginning, but with time come knowledge. Mm -hmm. And with knowledge, I learned that in trucking, there's highs and there's, there's lows. lows. Yep. And when there's highs, you have to live like you're still in that low. And by living, I mean financially. If I made, you know, if I grossed $5,000 this week, you know, I might put in the bank 38, 3900 of that, you know, depending on my expenses fuel-wise. Um, but next week, I may only gross $1,700. Mm -hmm. So out of that, you know, you figure, you know, I'm going to pocket about 900 to 1000 um, So I was, I was able to put money back for bad times. Um, I was hit hard in November. The engine went down in my truck, mm -hmm. um, and it cost me almost $25,000 to get my engine rebuilt. Um, I had it done at a Kenworth dealer out of Tupelo, Mississippi, and it was twenty-four six fifty-seven, you know, or so and some change. Um, 
and I was able to pay for that. Nobody, I don't care who you are, what you are, no one is prepared to drop 25K on something that, you know, this is what feeds my family. Um, but I had money set aside. Uh, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I was ahead. able to... I, I was able to put the, sh the truck in the shop immediately. I was down for about three weeks. And mm. actually in that in that time frame is when I decided, you know, to oppose to giving away the 15% since I was basically running my own company inside of a company mm -hmm. is when I got my own authority. Um, while my truck was in the shop, I filed for my MC number and my DOT number, got all my licensing, got all my paperwork together, my IFTAs, my my uh, IRPs and all that stuff together. How so much? When my truck come out of the shop. How how much? I was if you ready to, if 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 you don't mind, if you don't mind, sorry sorry for the interruption, but if you don't mind, can you tell us how much uh, how much that that entails to get everything your your IFTA, your MC, your DOT? Can can you tell us how much all that uh, runs? Um, if you do it yourself. You can get your, your your DOT and your MC for I think it costs you about three hundred dollars, um, and depending on your state, it cost me fifty dollars to you know get my LLC to attach to my DOT and MC. So we're looking at three hundred and fifty dollars. Um, my IRP, which is my plates, cost me eighteen hundred and fifty dollars um, for the truck. Um, I, of course, didn't own a trailer at the time. I was renting a trailer, so I had to purchase a trailer. Um, I chose a 2013, which still cost me $16,500, um, and it cost me, I think, 80 or $90 for the tag for the trailer. Um, so if a man or woman, you know, wanted to do it theirself, you're looking at somewhere, you'd probably want to have somewhere two to 3000 Four thousand cash, um, just to get everything ready to go, um, and that's not including, you know, like a trailer or anything. So, so um, I looked into some services mm -hmm. um, that could put this together for me, and we were looking at, you know, anywhere from six hundred to thirteen hundred dollars just to get my MC and DOT number. So for from a new paid services. So for a new driver that's interested in going that route, how much would you say, including the truck, including the paperwork and all, you know, and whatever else, how much would you recommend a driver to save up to uh, to to successfully start? Um, I can speak on my own services. I paid fifty five hundred down on my truck when I got it. Um, my insurance was uh, $1,650 down payment. Um, I paid $1,250 a month on that. I, I would say somewhere in the $10,000 range to okay. start. And that's not to, you know, that's to put a down payment on a truck and everything. That's, you know, definitely. And that's not including the trailer. Okay. I would say, you know, to be comfortable, to, to have cash on hand for fuel, um, it, the truck is going to break down. In trucking, I don't care if it's a 2021 truck that you just rolled off of the showroom floor. It's going to um, break it's down. It's going to break down. Mm -hmm. and even if it's a tire. And if, if you're out here on the road, it's happened to me, thank, thankfully, it's only happened to me once. I had a steer tire go down, mm. and it cost me over $500 um, to have the steer tire replaced on the side of the road, and it cost me about seven hours of my day sitting on the side of the road waiting for someone to show up. Mm. Um, so the, ex the, the expenses is real, and it, again, it's not if, it's when, because it's going to happen, and it can be an old, you know, beat up truck or it can be a brand new 2021 you know truck of your choice um but the truck's going to break down uh, these trucks nowadays are all computer based and computer ran we call them electronic mm -hmm. um and, and we all know that electronics fail mm -hmm. um you know 
That's what's up, man. That is what's up. Thank you. Thank you very much. Whoops, wrong button. God damn it, man. Hold on. There we go. The bomb dropped. Thank you very much for 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 that good for them for them jewels, man. Because this this is what this is what you know new drivers need need to know about. They need to know about how much money they need to save up. They need to know about what's what's the business end of of actually owning a truck not just getting out here rolling and and willy-nilly it man that's i mean wow that's that's some that's some good yeah, jewels right there man you you um there's there, oh go ahead go ahead go ahead oh i was gonna uh, I, I was just gonna say there there's there's a lot uh, that goes into it there's uh, you know like i said I, i've been in this you know going on seven and a half years I, I still consider myself a rookie. Um, anyone that that goes into it and has, you know, as you stated earlier, you know, people saying I'm an owner operator and I'm this and I'm that. Mm -hmm. I'm a truck driver. Um, you know, the owner operator portion is brought up when people ask, "Do I own the truck?" I do own it and I do operate it. Um, but I'm a truck driver. You're a truck and, driver and first. Me, I'm still I'm I'm still in school. Um, every day that I'm sitting behind this wheel. Um, it, it's just like someone sitting in a classroom. Uh, you know, I chose truck driving. This person chose college. Um, and, and going to college, there's no two-week college. You know, there's a four-year degree mm -hmm. and an eight-year degree and a ten-year degree. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm seven and a half years in to my eight-year degree right now. Okay, um, that's what's up. That is what's up, man. I'm... I'm I'm sitting here enjoying this, man. You you just don't know how much I'm enjoying this right here. Um, so again, so again with these with these broker freights, uh, with these broker freight rates, man. Um, are you um, like like I said before? So you are you are you working with with a broker? that that are that in quote unquote is taking care of you as far as the rate goes because like i said some of the some of the drivers over here saying like yo they getting they they getting like a thousand let's say like 1500 miles 1500 miles and they only getting like 60 70 cent a mile for that run and they feel that they can't operate their truck for for that amount yeah, and, and I guess we uh, we kind of uh, I get we didn't I did uh, kind of deviated uh, uh, away from that conversation and oh, no. kind of got lost no. in translation and talking about something else. No, 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 but, we're good. But to, but to rewind, to, but to rewind back to that, um, you, you know, you, the most important thing, not only in this industry or this business, you have to know your numbers. If you don't know your numbers. You don't know your business. You have to know what it costs you to operate your truck. You, you, you have to go into, you know, I sit down on a, on a daily basis, and, and if I don't, I have a wife that's able to, and, and, and we calculate these numbers every day. And, and I include insurance. I include maintenance. I include changing tires. I include, you know, changing the oil, the air filter, um, cleaning supplies, uh, office supplies, paperwork, printer ink, the computer, all of that stuff goes into my numbers. And, and I base it off of the miles that, that, that I think that I'm going to run for the week. And for me, as a company driver, and don't get me wrong, company drivers are vital to the trucking industry. Everyone isn't made, it's not in their DNA. To be an owner-operator own or operate not only a truck but a business in general and, and and i mean that in the best possible way some of us are leaders and and some of us are better some of us are better at leading and some of us are better at following um and, and i've been a follower for you know six years six and a half years in this industry and and, and i made the the jump to try to be a leader and, and create an opportunity. And, and everyone has that same opportunity. And, and, and I wholeheartedly believe that everyone is, is able 
to to make the same leap that I made. But just like myself, we we sometimes get scared on making the leap because you know sometimes and a lot of the times we're not only providing for ourselves, but we have little ones at home that you know depend on us to to make sure that food's on the table, regardless if we're able to put our elbows on the table every night or not. They know that the father or the mother is out here um, able and providing for them to put their elbows on the table every night. And you have to know your numbers. If if somebody can get, I don't, me personally, my truck is now paid for. I don't have a truck payment. I, I still do have a trailer payment, but my truck payment was fourteen seventy five a month. And that's a lot to budget, you know, weekly, that's about $365 um, coming out of my settlement. Um, and I, I don't have that expense now. And I, I can't, I refuse to, to move my truck for less than $1.85 a mile. Okay. If I can't, if I can't make $1.85 a mile, not only for the miles there, but the miles also back, I, I can't afford to move my truck. And, and if somebody is out here moving freight for 80 cents a mile or 70 cents a mile, I'm by no means knocking them because I do not know their numbers. I know my numbers. Um, and their numbers are, are, everyone's numbers is significantly different. My truck cannot operate for under a dollar eighty-five a mile. Okay. Um, if somebody can move freight for seventy cents a mile, I mean, you figure fuel alone, fuel is cheap right now, it's super cheap, but it's still costing you somewhere between forty-five and fifty cents a, a mile to operate in fuel alone. Okay. Now, seventy cents, where does that where does that leave room? That, you know, you for me, I figure twelve cents a mile for maintenance. Where does that leave room for me to get paid mm-hmm. as the truck driver? Because because at the end of the week, the settlement is is all mine. It all belongs to me. But my uh, the the business or the truck has to make money because the truck you can't take care of the truck. The truck has to take care of itself. Mm-hmm. And, and what I mean by that is financially, you know, repairs and and so on and so forth. And then you have to be taken care of. You know, no mm-hmm. none of us like to work for free. You know, none of us is going to go over here to the loves and say, hey, let me mop your floors for the week, and I don't need no pay. <laughs> and, and my personal belief is, is is that's what a truck driver, an owner-operator, a lease operator is doing if he's saying, I'm going to move your freight for a dollar a mile. He's mm-hmm. basically say, he's basically trading his time for fuel. Mm. Okay. And, and, with, and, and with the brokers, with the brokers, they – it's it's kind of a double edged sword, man, because you know, we're all in it to make money. You're a company driver, you said. Mm-hmm. You know, if the company tells you, you know, hey man, we just gave everybody a pay raise to seventy five cents a mile, but you've been making forty two cents a mile for the last twelve years, man. Are you comfortable making forty two cents a mile? Are you gonna tell the company, Nah man, I'm good. I don't need to make no more money. Mm mm. I ain't gonna say that shit. I'm gonna tell you exactly. Because that's why you're in the business and 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 brokers although i don't agree with you know some of the stuff but but i don't know i'm only hearing um you know and it comes back to the eld do i agree with everything with the eld no do i agree with everything with the brokers no do i agree with everything you know a lot of these truck drivers are saying no because you know, just like in your industry and trucking and you run in the podcast and mm-hmm. whatever else endeavors you might be involved with, I'm sure that there's people in your profession that don't represent you exactly. the way that you represent yourself. And, and, and that's my stand on the whole situation. I, I'm, I'm blessed, fortunate, smart, um, you know, what, whatever it may be. I, my truck sat for five weeks, mm-hmm. sat in the driveway five weeks and, and although I, I said my truck's paid for I, I still have uh, $1,250 a month in insurance mm-hmm. my trailer payment is $657 a month those are fixed costs that means those come out every month regardless if my truck moves or not uh, fuel is the only thing that's not fixed because if I don't move my truck I don't burn any. Um, if my truck don't move, I don't make any money. 
and I'm losing the 1250 and the 650. Um, and as an owner operator, I, I, my goal is to make a thousand dollars a day. Not no. Let me re rewind. My goal is for the truck to make a thousand dollars a day, and whatever money the truck makes is split between the truck and myself. Um, so we want to gross five thousand dollars every week, and and we don't hit that number every week. But sometimes, you know, this week alone, I was sixty-seven hundred mm -hmm. and change for the week. Mm -hmm. Um, gross. Um, so uh, ultimately, you know, I try to be home two days a week. I'm, you know, generally home every other night, and then every weekend I'm at home. Um, but the truck, I, you know, I look for the truck to make five thousand dollars a week. I can get out here and run five thousand miles. I know I can't. It's not possible with the ELD. Um, but for a dollar a mile, I would have to run five thousand miles in order to do that. And getting five point six miles per gallon. You know, I'm getting fuel about every 750 miles, um, you know, to the tune of 300 plus dollars. Um, so is it the broker's fault? Is the brokers doing something wrong? Yes, no, maybe. Um, if a broker calls me and says, hey, man, I have this great load. It's going from Mississippi up to Ohio. Okay, cool. What's it paying? Uh, well, the load's paying, you know, 85 cents. I, I'm sorry, man. I can't take the load. I, now, if I need money, 85 cents isn't going to put any money in my pocket. It's going to take me away from my family for two days, and I'm trading my time for fuel because that's basically all I'm going to get. If, if, if I can't make a dollar a mile to myself, not including fuel expenses and stuff and generally i like to be somewhere in the 80 cents paid mm -hmm. to josh um and if i can't do that it's cheaper for me just to hang my keys on the wall and go work for stevens transport or you know any company that's paying their drivers 40 to 50 cents a mile if i can't do better than what i would make at a company it makes more sense financially for me to be able to go climb in a company truck, turn the key on, worry about truck driving, and when I get done with that load, turn the key off and not worry about truck driving. Because, you know, that's the luxury that company drivers have is they don't have to worry about, you know, outside of being broke down on the side of the road and having to stay in a motel, they don't have the financial burden, you know, that an, an owner operator and unfortunately a lease purchase operator have. Um, so if I can't make 80, 85 cents a mile paid to me weekly, it just doesn't make sense. Okay. And I would drive, um, you know, for someone else. That's what's up, man. That is what's up. Bomb drop for that. I hope you guys are listening because I am. You, you see, I you see, I didn't say nothing. I'm I, I'm I'm listening. I'm right here. Uh, listening and paying attention to this young man. Well, uh, man, Andrew, uh, listen, I, I appreciate you coming on, man, dropping these jewels for us, man. I mean, this is this is one learning experience today. You know what I'm saying? Um, what's uh, how how did a uh, CV19 or C19 affected you, man? How 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 did the uh, how how did the uh, pandemic for the last couple of months affected you um, uh, personally? Because you're uh, well, you're you know you're well, owner I mean, operator. It, it definitely uh, uh, interrupted the rates. It interrupted my routine. Um, normal uh, what we consider normal is what i consider normal and what you consider normal or you know maybe two different things it may not be but for me it definitely interrupted my my normality mm -hmm. of, of life just everyday life um it, it, as crazy as it sounds man I, i'm sure you've been you know one of those proponents of the people of walmart um you know you've had a laugh or you've shared something about it or mm -hmm. and, and i miss man just being able to go to Walmart, you know what I mean? Um, going to the grocery store. I miss being able to go sit down at a restaurant, uh, you know, with my family and, and, and just interact with restaurant staff or, or normal business staff. Um, 
I agree. It's a sad, it's a, it's a sad, uh, it's a sad time. It's a sad place uh, for everyone. Uh, there's not one person in, in uh, almost the entire world that hasn't been affected by this in some shape or form. I, I'm, I'm positive that no one I personally know um, has been affected uh, or infected, I'll say, by the virus. Mm-hmm. Um, I've been fortunate in, in that aspect. Um, we've pretty much been on lockdown, me and my wife and, and my son. Uh, we've pretty much been on lockdown at home, um, you know, outside of the, the few runs that I've done uh, myself. Um, so, you know, my, my thoughts and prayers are definitely with, with, with everyone, no, not one individual person, but everyone, because we've all been affected in some uh, shape or form. Yes, yes, we have. And, we, and, and, we, and, and we've all been let down by um, our government. And, and, and it's not, and I'm not even getting political. I don't care if, if you're Democrat or, or Republican. You, you would never know which one I am because I, I'm, I'm old school in that form to where I don't need to advertise who or why or what or you know who I voted for or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. It doesn't matter if you're Democrat or Republican. We, we've all been let down in, in some shape or form, and, and the government tried with this, you know, this stimulus package mm-hmm. um, and the unemployment and the extra six hundred dollars and. And as the as the United States is starting to open back up, um, these businesses are realizing that they're not going to get their employees back Mm-mm. because you know us as truck drivers, you know we're fortunate monetarily, money wise. Is you know we, me if you're not my mantra is if you can't make a thousand dollars a week trucking, you know you're, you're the company that you're working for isn't taken care of. Mm-hmm. But you can't go to all of us isn't blessed. To, to all of us aren't truck drivers and all of us aren't people that can go to work at McDonald's and then you know the people that work at McDonald's they get a salary and and us as a truck driver you know we make three or four or five times over weekly what they do um, and if, if you know if they go from making three hundred dollars a week to nine hundred dollars a week you know why do we want to go back to punching a time clock you know what I'm saying you know what I, I just got finished reading the article a uh, friend of mine, friend of mine, Jarvis Jones, sent me a sent me an article uh, about a Maryland restaurant owner can't get her employees to return to work because they quote unquote is making more money while sitting at home collecting their stimulus and unemployment checks than they can make while going. I mean, returning back to work. And it's, you know, for, for owners, you know, for, for restaurant owners that's trying to get back on a, that's trying to get back into the groove of things, which CV, uh, CV-19 really hurt it them the most, you know, as far as with the social distancing and, and all like that. And, you know, it, it's going to, it's going to be hard to get, you know, get back in the swing of things, especially for these sit down restaurants, especially for these buffets. That's I, I want to see what's going to happen to Golden Corral. I mean, I, I want to see what's going to happen to that. <laughs> Is they going to actually get back to being the way it once was until now coming in there, getting, you know, with the shields up and and they, they might have to turn into a regular restaurant. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So. So, yeah, yeah. I, I, I think I think with. You know how, how we we started this conversation in the beginning about trucking, as to where you know the the, the deviation between old school truckers and paper logs mm-hmm. and new school truckers and electronic logs. Mm-hmm. I, I don't think there's no going back. I, I think that there's going to be a new normal. Did, and what exactly. I mean is with the restaurant, there's no there's no going back to how it used to be. Mm-hmm. I, I think there's going to be a new normal, a, a new precedent. Um, has been set, and, and I just, just don't think there's no going back. There uh, isn't. Everything is going to be different. Everything is going to be new, and if everyone's going to be in the trial period. And, and that's the one good thing that I can say about the government is they're trying now to create articles of, uh, of, uh, of a law to protect these small businesses, restaurants, or, or what have you, to where when these employees or uh, patrons do 
come back into their business, they won't be able to be sued in cases to where they may get sick or something like that Mm -hmm. pertaining to this COVID-19 and the new protections and all of that. Exactly, exactly. Well, Andrew, man, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you very much for your time, man. I do appreciate, uh, let me see something right quick. Let me see something right quick. Uh, let's see. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. All right. <laughs> there we go. So, like I said, man, I, I appreciate you coming on, spending time with us, you know, with me and my listeners, man. I really do appreciate it. Uh, before I let you go, man, is there any tips or advice you'd like to give, uh, like to give any of these new jazz that's coming into the game? You know, seven years deep, still a rookie. You got any advice? Um, my, my my biggest advice is uh, um, hear what people say. Um, never really listen. Um, and, and, and what I mean by that is, is no one can can operate for you. No one is going to pay your bills. No one's numbers is going to be the same as yours. Never think that you know more than the next man or woman. Always hear what they say and take what they say and turn it into your own knowledge and your own commitment. And only you know how to make you successful. That's what's up. That's what's up. Well, guys, that's it for today, Mr. And Mr. Joshua Andrews. I call him Andrews. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate you coming on, bruh. Thank you very much for for all of the jewels that you just dropped, man. I mean, woo, lots lots to take in, man. Lots to take in. If you guys like to come on and chop it up with me just like Andrews, man, all you got to do is look me up. You know what I'm saying? Lockoutmanpodcast at gmail.com. Or you can go to the DM over at Instagram. Make sure you subscribe over there. And, uh... And what what else? You can text me too. 216-600-2090. If you guys like content like this, don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe, comment, share, and hit that bell for more content like this. Make sure you hit that bell, man. You know, it, it, I, I, I pop up with new stuff all the time. You know what I'm saying? I am locked out, man. I do appreciate it. This is my man. And uh, Joshua Andrews, I appreciate him coming on. And uh, on that note, we are gone.